here working on another paper routine wall project. We're gonna kind of show you, start to finish how this is done. And we'll start over on this side. So you can see here we've kind of dug a trench, put in our paper wall. Uh, typically, we would come in here and level out this lower section and level out the upper section and terrace it and make uh, nice working conditions. But as you can see, it's raining right now. It's been raining nonstop. So trying to get as much done as possible without making a huge mess. You can see we've still got some of our old grass remaining up there. When we're done with all this wall, we'll come back in here and uh, strip that down and level it out. And then we'll, uh, we're going to do a concrete patio up here, fire pit here, and a pool over there. And then this uh, wing wall is going to come out here about 10 feet, and then we'll blend these elevations together. Um, but um, over here, we've got a um, low spot. We've got a drain pipe that's uh, at the bottom of our um, excavation here. And that's a perforated pipe, 4 inch. And that's going to take any of the water that percolates down through this gravel out this way. So you can see over here, we've got drain pipe. It's sloping all downhill over to this corner out and underneath here. And then we've got this rock. It is a 3 8 crushed rock uh, clean. So you want clean angular rock um, so that they lock together. Uh, once we got that as our base material, got about six inches of base in here. We've got a drain pipe in here. Now we can start setting our stones. Um, typically, my favorite tool here is a dead blow. You want a soft hammer to hit on these with. Dead blow hammer. You're going to need a tape measure, a level. I actually uh, need to get some more levels out here. I like using a 12 inch level, a two foot level, and then a longer 48 inch or 60 inch level. And uh, we've also got a string line set up here. So we've measured off the house here, the distance we want coming out to here, making sure we've got a straight line. What I've found is obviously we need to have these pavers level side to side, so we always measure them on both sides. We also measure them on this this axis. We also wanna make sure that they blend with the one next to them. And we have same elevation there. But what I found is you stack these up, this this uh, is the backbone, this back side here. So uh, we're using a string line on this one. We're measuring the same distance all the way along here. And that will get our back super straight. And that back is what uh, controls every layer as we go up. So as long as the backs is flat and straight together, everything above it's going to be flat and straight. And that's really where the longer levels come into play. You get a, a 48 inch or longer level in here. You can really line up those backs together, make those all super straight, and uh, you're really set to go. Um, this bottom layer is going to take you twice as long or longer than every other layer above. If you do this one right, everything above is going to be easy. A couple of uh, tricks um, to look out for as we look inside here. Um, if we've got a uh, uneven joint here, that tells me that the one of the pavers is off canter. And then if you see over here, we haven't set the stone yet. You can kind of see that. So this bottom here has a much larger gap than this top. So even though these tops are flush, this one is setting a little bit cantered in. Um, so those are just quick things to look out for. Make sure your, your front face here flush and um, and then as far as these being level I think when we first started doing these walls that was something that, you know we thought hey we'll make the front face flush and that's not the case so these, this front face does not have to be flush this is a um, guillotine cut edge so these are not um, matching necessarily you might have this side stick out a half an inch more than this side as long as your back sides are set up you're gonna be good to go you can see here we'll be doing a corner here and uh, we'll have a, our next piece up, we'll have a half inch overset. So that piece will come over here. And then this piece right here will be half overset. So we'll 
go into that one. We'll blend these two corners together, and then we're gonna have uh, our caps as well. So we've got our four inch caps up there, and we've got three more pallets of wall blocks coming, and another pallet of caps. And we've already, we got two partial pallets, a really small partial pallet of block, and then this is a partial pallet of uh, uh, caps. I think I think you get 60 caps on a pallet and 45 blocks on a pallet. Um, but yeah, there's kind of our starting phase. We'll show you some clips kind of as we go through the process, and we'll uh, kind of keep showing you as we go. Okay, here, we're working on radius. We got a straight wall, we use a string line to straighten that out. Now we're working on radius. Best way I've found to do this is measure this distance. Here we've got three and three eighths. We just do the same thing on all of these. So for this inner radius, I don't want to find our center point over there, so I'm just going to measure between each block. And on this larger radius, we're going to use our center point here, we're doing a 10 foot radius off of there to the front face of the wall. So I'll have to measure how wide a block is, about 12 inches. So we will go 11 feet from this pin to the back of these blocks on this radius all the way around that corner. And then here we're just going to be doing our smaller radius.
Today we're putting our caps on. We got these all glued up and cut. Working on this final section, this curve area right here. We started with the straight caps here. Did all of these. Started with our end caps here. Brought those in and then we finished off each of these little joints. So the hardest part will be down here on this curve. I've already started cutting these. Basically every other one we're cutting. So here we're lined up to set up this guy. We'll get lined up on the front, give our gap the way we want it. And then I just take the, the straight edge and go off of our brick next to it. Get it straight, mark line with a sharpie. And that's my cut line. When I cut these, I cut at a slight angle so that the top is super flush. And then down here, we've got a little bit of a gap and that just helps uh, make that seam on top look uh, seamless as we go across, just like these factory edges are nice and close seam. We won't quite have the same seam here, but it's uh, nearly impossible to get the demo saw to cut a straight line. So that's the best way i found to do it. And we'll cut all these, keep cutting these around, and then once we're all cut, we'll come back in here and start gluing. Glue it to here, and we'll be done. And then, sounds like we're gonna sod this area, put some sand here, level this and regrade this, and then we'll clean up the equipment and get out of here.